wish I could stay longer. Oh. We have to fly to Mexico tonight. To Mexico. Oh, God. So I only just found out that it's a 10-hour flight. I was like, what? Uh, Is it really 10 hours to Mexico City? You know, I think it might be more. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. I thought for some reason, I just on the map, I thought, oh, we're on the right <laughs> continent now. Surely it can't be 10 hours. Oh. It's the same as, like, London to Los Angeles. It's crazy. Yeah, but Sao Paulo to Los Angeles, it's over 12 hours. Oof. So I think you might be in for 11 they're, you know, oh boy. they're letting you think it's only 10, but I think it might be more. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but it's all in a good cause. No, it's good. I listen, this is like sort of like, these are high class problems to have. It's like being able to travel the world and promote your movie and promote a movie that you're already proud of. That's the key thing. Also, like, this is my first time ever in South America. Really? Yeah. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I wish I'd come sooner. Oh. <laughs> well, come on. As soon as I came to Brazil, I was like, why haven't I come to Brazil before? Well, it was all Ansel's idea, right? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to come too, like when it came up. But yes, Ansel was the one that he, 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 was, he started the thing on Twitter about coming. But I always like sort of, you know, I mean, what's interesting is that like not all of my movies before have been released in every country. So on this trip, there's actually a bunch of countries that I've never done press in before. This is my sixth movie, but like this time, places I've never been to before was like Malaysia, um, Brazil, and then China and South Korea. Like so, wow. on this press tour, there's like four countries I've never been to, which is amazing. But I really like Brazil, and I would say like great food, great coffee, very colorful, amazing street art. Lots of beautiful people. Why didn't I come before? And slow traffic. <laughs> <laughs> this is it where baby be, driver comes in handy. That's right. No, baby would never get away with no it way. in Sao Paulo. You would think of ways of doing it. <laughs> now, to do a Sao Paulo sequel. You know, Shaun of the Dead and Baby Driver, you qualify for one of my favorite people ever. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, how did this wonderful idea come to you? Because it's all new. Well, it is all new, but the irony is, is that it is an idea older than any of the movies I've done. Because I had this idea before Space and before Shaun of the Dead, is uh, when I was like 21, I was listening to the first track that's in on the soundtrack by the John Spencer Blues Explosion. Bell Bottoms. And I couldn't not think of a car chase. I would listen to the song and I would imagine this car chase. And it was like sort of having like a vision of sorts. And so at some point I thought, well, what's the movie that goes with this idea? What's it about? And then really like the idea of music being the central driving force in the literally. movie. Literally. Literally the driving force, yes. So that was, that was really the idea. Yes, yeah, so sort of this young driver who has to listen to music the entire time and, um, and to sort of do a heist movie that sort of filtered through like um, somebody's own personal soundtrack. Um, the soundtrack is so specific. Um, have you been, you know, collecting songs for Baby Driver all your life, you know, ever since you were 21? Or Yeah, I mean, definitely, I definitely like sort of, I think, in, in, this, in this century, for sure. I think sort of like, I think, maybe around the time that I, like, I never used to have a Walkman as a kid or a Discman. It wasn't until the iPod came out that I started using headphones at all. I never used to wear headphones as a kid. But when the iPod came out, and then it's like, oh, it's my entire record collection on this iPod. And then, you know, sort of like songs would come to me either. I already owned, and I thought, oh, this could be interesting. This is an interesting um, idea. So that was basically how it kind of like came about. Because it feels like a playlist. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it was. I still have... The original Baby Driver playlist on my computer. Oh, that's wonderful. The same thing that I wrote the script to is I kind of had it all laid out, you know. And what about Ansel? How did you land on Ansel for the part? Because I can't think of anyone else uh, playing Baby at this point. It's just like Matthew Broderick is Ferris Bueller and um, Ansel is Baby. Yeah, I mean, I met him three years ago when I decided that this was going to be the next movie. Um, the first question that the studios would ask is like, well, who's Baby? Who do you put at the center of this movie? And, and basically, um, I met Ansel, his name had come up, 
the first time we met, we just talked about music. We didn't talk about the script at all. And then at the end of the meeting, I said, well, I have this script that's quite music heavy, and I think you'll like it, so I'm going to send it to you. Tell me what you think. And he was like, I have to play its part. So that's really sort of, he auditioned for it, and he was really good. You know, it's a funny thing. He wasn't quite what I thought of the character being like physically, but as soon as he started doing it, I couldn't really imagine anybody else. Yeah. He really runs away with it. It's, it's wonderful. How much input did, it ha did he have in fleshing out Baby? Well, All those so. traits and the sunglasses and the way he moves. It's so detailed. Well, a lot of that was in the script. And then some things kind of came later. You know, it wasn't until we were in um, Atlanta that the idea of him doing a southern accent came up because we thought it would make more sense for him to have a regional dialect and thought it would make him sound more sympathetic. And then even like little, so a lot of the things were already there, like the sunglasses and, you know, the kind of the wearing the shades the whole time. And, but then there were some things like the scars that came later, you know, seeing that he's got the little scars from yes. the accident when he was a kid. That stuff kind of came later, that wasn't in the script. Are you fond of cars? I am. I mean, I'm. I would say I'm. I am. Although I'm not a gearhead in the sense that I have like that I own vintage cars or anything. I'm a big fan of like driving, but like sort of, especially because I travel around a lot with work. I don't like have like a big collection of old cars. Most of the time, because most of my friends who have them, I've been in them when they've broken down. So I just think so, sort of like kind of like classic cars and so sort of seems. It's like a very a expensive, expensive habit. hobby. Yeah, it's but also very, very time-consuming. Uh, that's and I'm a big driving fan. One of my like great pleasures in life is driving and listening to music. But it comes through in yeah. the movie. <laughs> no, I really, really loved it. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Can't wait to see it again. Thank you. It's going to be one of my, it's going to be on my playlist. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Edgar. Thank you.